Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here. Let's get to some painting. We have some water here and some matte liquid medium. I'm using a one inch brush and I have a 12 by 12 inch canvas on my easel. Today I'm gonna to be using just one color for this painting. It's a very cool little abstract. I have two that I'm gonna paint for you in a row right now. They're very quick to do. It only took me about five minutes to paint each one. The first one's gonna be entirely cobalt blue. And I'm really focusing on exploring negative spaces. What's a negative space? A negative space in a painting is where you have areas of less activity. In this case, my negative space is going to be the white of the canvas. So we're going to have these streaks of blue going on here, and there's going to be some spots here where a lot of the white is going to show through. And in those spots where the white is really showing through, that's my negative space, my space where I have less activity. I'm also going to be using a fun dripping technique where I'm going to splash water onto the canvas and allow it to drip freely and sort of randomly. As you can see, there's some drips already forming, and that's going to be part of the aesthetic of this very simple, very fun abstract. I wanted to do a very basic abstract like this for you all, especially for beginners if you've never painted before and you want to get used to just putting paint onto the canvas this is a fantastic little exercise a great little piece to try the important thing to remember is that your painting doesn't need to look exactly like mine and when you're doing something that's abstracted like this where it's really about the canvas itself and the paint on it and less about representing something you don't need it to be anything close to mine it may look totally different by the time you're done but that's great because you want it to be unique to you, individual. Here I am putting on some more of the cobalt blue, allowing it to drip. Some more water has been added to my brush. When I cut these painting videos together, I usually cut out any spot where I take my brush out of frame. So you're not seeing me dip the actual brush into the water, but that's what I'm doing. So whenever you see me take my brush off the canvas, I'm usually either adding water to the brush or I'm just very quickly wiping it off on some paper towel to clean it. All right, here we go, putting in a few more spots. You can see that I'm leaving a great deal of white on my canvas there, and that's all those negative spaces that I was talking about before. And I'm trying to preserve as much of the drips as I possibly can. If it's dripping too fast, I might stop it. Just stop it from dripping to the bottom by doing a quick swipe with my brush. But for the most part, I'm allowing them to drip and run. And in a minute, I'm going to really enhance that effect by putting more water onto my canvas. I'm putting some more white in my mix to lighten up a few sections. These are all short, brief, horizontal strokes that I'm using today. It's mostly my personal aesthetic preference. Where do I feel like it needs to have more motion? In a few spots I'm putting some bigger strokes to break up the monotony of tiny little brush strokes. And next I'm going to take that water and just start flicking it right onto the canvas. Be careful not to flick too strongly or you will get it onto the back wall. And you don't want that if you're painting near a wall. Now if this composition feels too basic for you, there's a couple of things you can do. I have lots of abstracts on my channel, so you can watch one of my other abstracts that have more colors going on and more complex techniques. You also could let this totally dry and then go back over with a very light glaze of another color, like maybe yellow to give it more of a green accent. You could put that with a lot of the water and a lot of the liquid medium to thin it out. Just splatter that on. You could just gently glaze brush it with a flat wash brush very lightly over the top in certain spots. You can always take and put a solid line across at a diagonal and then paint a solid block of color on one half so you have a very loose section and then you have a very strict structural section.
there's many other things you can try. So just find out what you would like and paint that. Here I'm taking a dry flat wash brush and pulling off some of the paint to more negative space. Onto the second of my two little abstracts using the very same technique. I'm going to mix some water with the matte liquid medium and apply it directly onto the canvas. I've cleaned my one inch brush thoroughly. And here I'm applying it thickly onto the canvas. My camera keeps adjusting the focus because I'm getting my hand a little close to it. Sorry about that. It'll be over in just a second. Back to my water and medium mix. Just a few more spots. I think a little bit of the blue snuck on there, but that's okay. We're going to cover it up with the purple in a minute. Oop, that's a lot of blue there. Take some of that off. That's okay. Remember to keep this loose and just have fun with putting the paint on the canvas. Don't worry about making it look a certain way or controlling it that much. This painting is not about control. It's about having fun with the paint and just enjoying the process of putting it onto the canvas. There I'm blending some white with my permanent magenta and of course some of the medium in the water. Same technique, short, brisk, horizontal brush strokes and a semi-random pattern. Keep your brush moving when you're doing this. Try not to get caught up in any one space and don't cover all the white. We're exploring negative spaces, leaving some of the canvas showing and because that's the aim of this painting. We really want to conserve a lot of the white. At least in some spots. I think for this painting, I'm also going to add added effect of a slight gradation, having more intense pink activity at the top. And then I'm going to lessen the effect gradually till it's mostly the white of the canvas at the bottom. Of course, the drips are coming down here. I'm allowing the water to run, and that's going to impede and get into the lighter section at the bottom, leaving lots of the white. Keep adding water to my brush. Here I have an almost clean brush. I have a little bit of paint on there, and I'm grabbing lots of the medium and just putting it onto the bottom of this canvas. As always with my paintings, the key is to keep the brushwork light and active. You want each of the individual strokes to show through in some way. And here I'm going back to my aggressive flicking technique, placing the water right on the canvas and allowing it to smear and run such beautiful natural patterns. more flicking for added measure and then back to my blocks of magenta. Of course you can do this painting with any color you like so if you don't like this magenta or the cobalt blue grab a color that you like from the store. You can use pretty much any brand that you would like. Of course the higher the quality the artist quality is going to be the best color going to be the most vibrant so if you really want a vibrant painting, make sure you go with that. But I don't want to recommend any one brand over any other. And if you want to just try this for the first time and you're a beginning painter, then using a student grade paint will be just fine for this painting. You don't need to buy the most expensive heavy body acrylic. Okay, a little bit more of the matte liquid medium. I have more pink on my brush leaving a lot of the white showing here at the bottom, or trying to at least. It sort of looks like reflections on a sidewalk to me. Could be trees reflected on water. I don't know, you can see all kinds of different things in these reflections. 
whatever you see is exactly what it is. That's the beauty of abstracts, is that everyone sees something a little bit differently when you look at it, and that's okay. Nearly done here. Thank you so much for watching, and have a fantastic artistic week.